end it for now. All right, so the tractor's back. I'm gonna go over before we cold start what we need to do and what workarounds there have been as the transmission or the clutch haven't been repaired. So there are workarounds. There's the trusty eighth gen always getting you to work and where you need to be. All right, so the workarounds that are supposed to work, last time in the previous video, you could see that when it was in high range, the gear selector, the digital, would only go into one gear and then it started giving me issues anytime I tried to change it after. So you have one shot. The way these transmissions work, I can't speak about low range, but I can speak about the high range. First to fourth gear are different ratios, but in fourth is what I use to plow the entire parking lot in this machine. It's designed first to fourth to be able to start from a standstill. You don't have to shift it through the gears like a car. Fifth to eighth is more for road speed. So there's a drastic change in gear ratios there. The goal here is to put it in fourth once and hopefully even with the transmission issue, it's going to lock into fourth and I'm gonna be using it the whole time. Now you may think, what about reverse? Reverse is only with the column shifter. So that does not affect it. The tractor will stay in fourth gear throughout the reverse shifts that I have to do a lot throughout the job. The clutch is still going to be jumpy and the clutch pedal will still be sticky, but that's what you have to deal with sometimes in jobs that you do. So let's do a cold start and then I'm gonna get to work for the next 15 hours as this snow picks up. So as you can see, it's in first gear. The column shifter is in neutral. Let's put it into high. And for the golden moment, let's put it into fourth. Okay, looks like once we let it warm up for a little bit, we're going to be okay. If it doesn't work, I'll let you guys know. Not much snow on the ground now but they're predicting up to 30 centimeters, so I'll be out here for a while. This thing really doesn't sound too healthy. All right, so we're about eight hours into the shift and a new problem has arisen. The gas pedal, when you move the throttle manually, you can see it pushes the gas pedal down. But when you push on it, there is no throttle at all. The RPMs don't build at all. I'll show you. So we'll look at the RPMs. Here's the manual throttle and the gas pedal down there. You see it depresses it, no revs. Push it with my foot, no revs. Let's see what this problem ends up being. I'm stuck right in front of the store right now. The walkway guys with the rear wheel drive van. Stuck in the middle of the road. No gas pedal. Another guy just came by with a John Deere from the side near me. And uh, if I need some help, he said he'd never seen it happen to his John Deere tractor, so it's a bit of an L for a Kubota. There's 
goes to John Deere. John Deere's are winning tonight. The boat is losing. Civic's winning. The Kubota is stranded. Right now, while it's idling after eight hours, it's still making that nasty sound. It sounds like some kind of a berry. So, I've been waiting for over an hour for help. Just a classic frustrated owner and I was told to go home and that's the end of my shift because they need to get someone out here to repair it so maybe there will be another part to the tractor series maybe this will be the end of it but if this is the end then the whole maintenance thing I've been saying about the tractors and running tractor with 12,000 hours with poor maintenance and poor parts this is the final result even with good operation it's going to give out in the middle of a snowfall randomly so not my company not my problem but you guys saw the story of this Kubota to this day so that's the story with the Kubota M125X